Hey everyone, welcome to Alchemy of Zero Phase. I'm Eric, and I uh, got a quick tutorial here I'm going to do on um, how to add people into a scene. Now, somebody had asked about this in the comments, and it is something that I played with and, and, and done before. Um, there's lots of different ways to go about doing it. This is just going to be kind of a, a quick and dirty way of doing it uh, without involving drawing in anything or um, involving control net in any way. So it, it is going to be, ex there's some experimentation and, and uh, trial and error. Hopefully it goes smoothly and uh, won't be too long. So uh, let's dive into this. I got a prompt. We're going to throw out my prompt generator here to generate a couple of street scenes um, in Italy. So I wanted something uh, that was like a street market, um, professional photography, wide view, sunny and beautiful, empty, colorful Italian street market trending. Okay, so we get our, our prompts here, standard prompts with camera information, trending on National Geographic, or trending in Magnum Photos. Uh, these are both websites that have tons of photos and are very highly likely to have been trained into the image AI. I'm gonna copy that, head over to Stable Diffusion. For this particular generation, we're gonna be using the uh, A Zovia RPG Artist tools with the VAE baked in. Okay, we're gonna select our prime prompt. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to, I'm just going to stick with that, keep it, uh, there's not going to be much of a change on anything. We're going to drop the sampling steps down to 20. We'll do two images per uh, uh, prompt, and we're going to do this 16 by 9. I want kind of a wide angle. I'm going to up this a little bit to about, yeah, let's do 960. So we're keeping it at 16 by 9. We've locked it into that, so it should automatically adjust the height. Gonna come down here and put in to our uh, prompt text box. We're gonna drop those two prompts in there, and then hit generate. Uh, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and enable the A detailer. Uh, I really have started getting used to this. Um, we're gonna have a track, and and because there will be people in here probably, I want to make sure their faces are already set up uh, and good to go, so we don't have to mess with that. So it looks decent. Let that start running through and generating some images here. Not bad. The second one we'll probably, we could probably use. There's already some people there. Um, there's definitely very few people up in here. We could work with that one. So it's currently going through. The A detailer is going through and correcting any faces that it might find, at least as best it can. It's very low res, but it, it sees and understands those and will just fix the general shape of them, which is cool. It is interesting how it'll pick various areas that it thinks there might be people, and it actually added people into the uh, market stand there. That's interesting. Definitely some good detail, though. Or maybe that was the second image. I don't know. We'll have to go through and see. Very cool that it does that. I mean, this saves us so much time in correcting faces in in uh, scenes. And I did my last video that I kind of went through this and showed uh, how it can benefit. Not sure what it's seeing there. It thinks that there's faces or something there. A lot of fruit. Maybe it thinks they're eyes or something. Let that run through and finish up. I think it's going to do one more set of two for the second prompt here. more people and I didn't do any upscaling on this I mean it's finding these faces all by itself it's pretty crazy what it can do okay so I guess it did hit all the images that's cool all right so what do we got um, we got some fruit stands we got people off in the distance that's not bad and we want to add some people up front here um, that one's not bad we could change that one up maybe add somebody sitting on a chair right here in front of the fruit stand Nah. Eh. Nah. I think I like these other ones better. I'm going to start with this one here. We're going to try that. Um, so here's the thing with AI and changing a scene that's already there. You are going to be using in painting. You are going to be changing the description. And you are going to be doing things to give the AI enough leeway to really change the in paint section. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean here. 
Well, first thing we're going to do, we're going to send this over to uh, in painting. Okay. And we're going to shrink this down a little so we have. Change that. So I'm getting used to this. Um, oh, that's right. We're going to change this a little bit so we can see what's going on here. And we can open this up. So this is uh, uh, an extension um, that allows you to manipulate the in-paint window uh, and give you a better control over it. You can you can zoom in on scenes uh, or areas and in-paint very specific things. You can use F to drag the whole thing around, Alt with the scroll wheel on your mouse to shrink it down. Um, it's, it's pretty fantastic. I'm just learning how to use it. Uh, if you want to know the uh, uh, link to this one, I want to say it is, where is it here? Shot. Can't know. You know, I'm not entirely sure. It might be, um, I'll have to look that up. And if I find it, I'll put it in the, uh, in the link. I don't know if this was something that was just built into uh, automatic 11.11, but it sure is use, useful. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, first thing, we got to switch this over to an in-paint model. And the reason that's one of the reasons I'm using the RPG Artist tools, because they got a pretty good in-painting model. It's on the same version. Just select the V3. But the one thing you want to make sure you switch over to, because this one doesn't have the VAE baked in, got to make sure you select the VAE uh, FTMSE 140,000MA pruned. Um, I think in another video I said I would link to that. Uh, I'll, I'll make a note of that and go back and make sure that gets linked. So, okay, so here's the thing. We sent this over to InPaint, but it didn't transfer over any of the information. Um, so that's just kind of one of the little side effects of using this down here is, yes, the information's in the metadata, but I don't know why it doesn't bring this over here. So we can either copy and paste it, or we can come over here and select the image. Uh, that we want to use. Let's see, which one was it? Uh, that one there. This one here, I think. Nope, not that one. Where is it here? Maybe it was this first one. Interesting. Got a bunch of other images here, so let's see. Let's go back over here and let's just copy and paste it. I don't want to sit there and waste time trying to find it. Uh, we're going to grab that prompt all the way down to here. I'm not going to worry about the negative prompt because we're going to go add that in here in just a second. Paste that into. Oh. All right, we'll just leave that there. Actually, you know, I apologize. We're not even going to be using this one since we're going to be modifying the characters in here, uh, all we need to do is add the prime. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a series of prompts of simple prompts for people that could be on a this type of street, okay? And so I've got a prompt I've got generated here, not generated, but ready to throw in here. So we're gonna put this in here. All I want is five prompts, 10 words each, five different descriptions of five specific people in an Italian market street. Let's see if it pops it out the way I want. So we got elegantly dressed woman adorned with vibrant floral pattern dress, browsing fresh produce on a bustling Italian market. Hey, that's perfect. Like we could run with that one. Elderly gentleman, well tailored suit, selection of fragrant herbs. Okay, that's not bad. So I can plump tomatoes. Um, yeah, let's run with this one right here. Let's grab that one. Okay, now we're gonna put this in here. So that's gonna be the focus of the uh, for the AI on what we're gonna be doing. And what is she doing? So we got adorned with vibrant floral pattern dress, browsing fresh produce on a bustling Italian market street. Okay, so it's obviously not bustling. We're gonna try and make it bustling. Um, so let's come down here. Let's change the size of our brush, give it some space. And let's just say she is, oh, produce, fresh produce. I don't know. Let's just put it over here. So I know there's some people back in here. Maybe I don't want to. Okay, so one thing to think about when placing this is how many, what do the pixels look like that you're covering up? Is this enough that the AI can work with to create whatever it is? And there's a lot of 
ch- a lot of different stuff going on here. I think we got lots of stuff to work with, and uh, I think we'll be okay. So think about where uh, her feet are going to be and where she's going to be and how tall she's going to be, okay? And what we're going to do is just fill in. It's kind of in a shade here, but I want to just give it a little bit of pixel. We want to give it enough context. The AI, this is how the uh, diffusion stuff works. Is it has to have context, okay? And we're just going to put that there. Come down here. We're going to do in paint uh, only masked, okay? We're going to give uh, the mask blur a little bit. Here's the thing we haven't done with this, and I'm not sure if we need to. Uh, we're gonna run with this without upscaling at first, okay? But we are going to uh, turn on a detailer here for this to make sure that if there is a face, it will fix it. We're also going to change this, the sampler over to DPM++ SDE Karas, okay? When in painting, it is always helpful to increase the number of steps, okay? Uh, it gives the AI enough room to figure out what the pixels are going to look like. And I'm going to put this at 40. I think it should be fine, or at least close to 40. We're also going to increase the batch size to 2, um, just so we can get some variations and hopefully hit, hit our mark. Now, here's the other thing we're going to do. Most of you are familiar with the de, uh, the denoise strength. You know, the lower it is, the less changes it's going to make, the less freedom the AI has to really manipulate the pixels, okay? The higher it is, the more change. And typically, you're going to be in the 70 to 80 range for most stuff. For what we're doing, because we're adding something that's not there, we got to give the AI lots of freedom with this. So we're going to put it up into 95. I, I don't know, it might be too high, it might not be. We might get something completely weird. Um, but we're going to try that, and sometimes I do turn this up, allowing the AI to really do a literal interpretation of the prompt. Uh, we're going to put it at 8 on the config scale. Uh, we got a detailer on. I think that's it. We're not messing with anything else. Um, mask blur. Uh, we're not dealing with high res, so I think 6 pixels should be fine. We are working with original because we are trying to give the AI enough uh, pixels to work with. If this proves difficult, we can switch over to fill and it will fill in what it thinks it can with the space that we've given it. Okay. Uh, you know, the other thing we need to do is change this. We want this to be square. So and we're going to do 768 by 768. Okay. And that's it. So uh, just a quick review. Uh, the in-painting model, make sure we got the uh, VAA for this particular one, and then the very simple prompt describing just the person, maybe what they're doing, okay? Um, and then the AI will interpret and, and, and be able to adjust based on the surrounding area, okay? And then mask blur, don't need to mess with that too much. Original on the, in, the mask content, we're doing original and only masked, okay? We've changed the width and height to a square or one to one ratio. You can do 512 by 512. I like to do 768 by 768. We're giving the config scale a little higher number, give a little more variance, a little more randomness, denoise strength. We're giving the AI a lot of freedom to really change up what's under those uh, the, what's under that mask. Okay. And we've turned a detailer on in this particular instance. You may want to experiment with this first before diving into this just to see uh, what you can get worked out, okay? So we're gonna generate on that. Let's bring this back over here. Let's actually grab that, bring it up here. Interesting. All right, I can already tell you right now, I'm pretty happy with the result. I, you know, sometimes you just don't get what you want, but I've done this enough times, I think it just kind of happens automatically. Um, so let's see what it see what it looks like here. It's gonna do the A detailer now on each one. You may see it jumping, you may see the face kind of come up close. We'll see what it does here. If it's usually if it's one face, you don't see that, but we'll see what it does. Oh, there it goes. Oh, look at that. Woo! 
Purdy. Okay. So, yowzers. Look at that. That's really cool. So we got the person added in. It looks like it kind of added somebody in behind her there. But she is standing in such a way that um, you can see the shadow kicking back there. So she is in, you know, lit up. Pro looks like proper. Looks pretty good. And uh, got the nice floral dress on. Very, very nice. That worked out much better than I expected the first time. So, and that one looks great too. Look at the shadow on the feet. And shadow's in the right direction. She's coming out around the corner. Um, really great first try. Nobody behind her. Didn't really manipulate too much of the stuff behind. Uh, sometimes you'll get like oddness in like, like in this here, you might see oddness in the shelves. But I think this one kept that pretty normal. So like if I wipe this out, let's go wipe the mask out. Yeah, see how this one's lower right here? So those lines are lined up the way they were before and it just added her in. So that's awesome. So now what we can do, we have more prompts. Let's say we want to add in the distinguished elderly gentleman, okay? We're gonna grab that prompt while we're here. Throw that over here. And then we're, what we want to do now is send this image back over to InPaint. Now that we've got that, we've got a pretty happy outcome. And we are going to, let's see, let's blow this up a little bit. Open this out here. Uh oh, we lost it. Okay, let's blow, blow that out. We'll send back to in painting here. Okay, and the elderly gentleman. Let's see if we can open this up. There we go. <clears throat> well, let's see. Let's put the elderly gentleman over. He you know what? No, I'm going to put him right here. I want to be about this high. Maybe he's hunched over, maybe now he's distinguished, who knows. We're gonna put him right on the edge, okay. Mask that in. Okay, and I think that's it. Uh, let's add a little more down here. Oh, you know one thing we gotta make sure of? <laughs> Uh, is that we don't have the original mask on there. So I don't think we do because we click the X. So when you send it in paint, the original mask will look like it disappears, but it's not actually there. If you don't see the text in the center saying start drawing or whatever it says, that means there's a mask there and you may not see it. And so you can either hit the back button here, which will get rid of them one at a time, or you click the eraser and it'll just wipe out any masks that are currently there. And then you can start drawing again. Okay. I think we're going to leave all the other settings the same. The only thing we had to change is the prompt and the mask. You know, obviously send the image over to the in-paint window. So we're going to go ahead and generate on that. Let's bring this back over here. This over here. Yeah, see, this one is a little different. Uh, it's having a hard time. It's not going to get it on that first, on that first try. Let's see. So we're going to interrupt that. Again, this is one of those things. Let's see. We got elderly. Oh, you know what? We didn't paste in the prompt. There we go. Distinguished elderly gentleman. Okay. But it did not do the prompt the way I wanted it to. But let's take a look at this. Just for kicks, we're going to bring this up to nine. Try it one more time here. We are on the edge of the image. And that may be what it's having a problem with too. You can see how it's still not doing it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here and get rid of that mask. And we are going to just mask out over here. We're gonna stay away from the edge of the image. Oops, I think that should be fine though. Let's give it a try. We'll put him right here, okay. Give that a try. Oh, we got one. Oh, we got both of them. Nice. Okay, cool. He looks a little small, uh, at least in comparison to her. This guy looks pretty normal. Got the shadow cast on the thing there, on the, uh, the um, market stand. 
So give it a second. It's going to go through and do the A detail again. So it may change her face. If you have the noise turned up or uh, the convict scale turned up on the A detailer enough. Let's come down here. Let's take a look and see what it said. I haven't, didn't change anything Oops. on it, but let's see what it says. Come down here to the A detailer in painting. And in paint, the noise strength is at 0.4, which will change it a little, just enough, and but not like overly change it. And uh, looks pretty good with him. He looks like he's looking at some of the food. So that's that one there. Okay, so that one there. Let's uh, take a look at that. She's got a pretty blank face. We might in paint her later, but yeah, look at that. Perfect. Awesome. I love it. It it uh, dropped him in there. He looks like he's looking at something, inspecting something. Great. Let's go to the next one and see what we got. So that was the elderly person. We got an enthusiastic young chef wearing a crisp white apron, carefully selecting plump painted plump tomatoes. So let's see what else we got. Cheek fashionista donning a stylish hat. We already got a woman in there. Let's see. A local artist with paint splattered smock, captivated by the vibrant array of fruits. Ooh. Okay. Let's grab that guy. Now you can change those up however you want. You can specify the type of people. I just told my prompt generator, just give me some random people that might be likely on this street. So have you know that's that's the fun of the prompt generator. Uh, you don't want to be specific, tell it to be specific. So let's go ahead and send this over to InPaint now. We're gonna go ahead and swap out swap out that prompt. Leave that all the same. We're going to make sure we erase any current masks. And I want to put this guy over here. I want him looking at this stuff right here. So yes, we are going to get rid of those people there. His feet should be about right there. And a lot of this is about just giving the AI enough, um, enough of the image to really play around with, to understand what it's going to do. And you know, it, it looks at the surrounding pixels and, and understands, hey, look, we're going to be adding this in. I know there's a fruit stand here. He's going to be looking at it. It's really fascinating how the AI works and and uh, looks at the image and understands that. I don't think we need to change anything else. Um, we're going to leave everything else the same and just see what it comes up with. So again, this ties into your workflow. You don't have to change every settings. It depends. You may have to do some micro adjustments like I did with the old guy. But uh, let's see if it puts anything in there. No, it does not look like it's going to. So let's come down here to the saying. We may have to do some adjustment on this. We are still only masked. Let's increase this just a few points. Hit generate again. Still not going to put them in there. So let's do this. We're going to just expand that mask a tiny bit. And then we're going to come down here. We're going to increase this. Sometimes you got to just lay on the noise. And whatever it comes up with may be distorted. The whole point is to get something in there that looks like a person. Like if I didn't like the way this guy over here looked, he's there. I can actually take him and re-render him as anything else I want now that that context is there. It's all about getting this to get something in there as context. Because right now all it's working with is you got these fruit stands, you know, vegetable stands, whatever you want to call them. And so it's trying to manipulate those pixels to get something that resembles a person out of it. Um, okay, again, we're going to mess with the settings on this. I'm going to go all the way up here. Uh, we're going to disable the A detailer for right now. I don't want to have to worry about that. Let's regenerate again here. Again, a lot of times this is roll of the dice. Yeah, we're not getting him. Okay, so we're going to add more pixels. More context. Giving the AI enough variance to kind of work with it. Check our prompt too. Here's another thing. Yeah, it's still not going to do. Okay, so here's something we can do. Uh, local artist. Um, what we can do is take this phrase. Let's 
change it. Not change it. What we're going to do is we're going to emphasize it. Okay, so you can highlight the word and use it on your keyboard. Do a control up, and what it does, is it starts adding emphasis to it. We're gonna we're gonna blow this out. We're gonna put it at 1.4, telling the AI really focus on this. This is what we're trying to put in. It does not want to cooperate. I wonder if it thinks of this person in the back here is that. Huh. Yeah, see, you're kind of seeing a shadow. He looks like he could be something like that. <laughs> a shadow figure in there. Interesting. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, we got somebody or something going on right there. I don't like this. This is not cooperating. Um, let's wipe this mask out. What do we got here? Yeah, see, it's taking those people there. I think that's going to be kind of the problem. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Leaving those people out. We're going to give an interesting mask. I'm going to come down here. Um, we're going to decrease the padding pixels, too. So the padding pixels, oh, you know what? The other problem is we didn't change this back to 768 by 768. That does make things more difficult for it. So padding pixels are the area. It's how many pixels out from this area, this XY area that you're describing. So the 768 by 768 area. Padding pixels are how far back it's pulling its view. And it helps you kind of adjust the details. By reducing it, it's actually bringing that in-paint area up closer versus almost like farther away. Um, consider it like a focus. You're focusing the in-painting area, okay? And so let's uh, let's give that a try. Let's just see if we can get anything into that area, this, this painter that we're trying to get in there. Yeah, it's putting people in the back stands there. I'm not liking that. Okay, let's wipe that out. What I'm going to do, we're going to do this. I know that's back in there too, but we're going to give it context up here on the street. Oh, what happened there? Try that again. Let's increase that mask size. Just so we can work a little quicker here. Try that. And we got these settings just turn dialed way up to try and get anything in there. What I might do is dial this up and dial this down next to see if we can get anything to pop up. It's having a real difficult time, you know, trying to come up with anything that looks there. And we may end up going to one of the secondary uh, purposes or secondary options of like drawing something in there uh, to try and get it to do anything. But I'm going to turn that up. We're going to turn this down just a little bit. There we go. We got one. Now here's the thing, because I've got this turned up, the config scale to 15, it's going to blow some stuff out. Okay, hyper color, it may look okay, kind of, but uh, now that we've got context there, um, we're going to uh, mask out part of that area and re-render it something with something a little less. I don't know, that's not bad. Got the colorful uh painter's smock on but it does look blown out you can see it's just super bright colors kind of doesn't fit the rest of the scene so now like i said what we can do is um actually before we go on just a quick review like i said make sure these are square width and height square and these are the ones you're going to me be messing with turning these up all the way will get something in the image it basically scrambles the image and gives the ai a chance to kind of get something in there but then now what we want to do is turn them down we're going to go all the way back down to 7 on this one. This one, since we've got somebody there, we can bring this down to uh, a normal range, like 0.75. OK, 
okay, on the uh, denoise strength, config scale down to seven. We're still gonna leave it at two, uh, render two images because we wanna get some op options. We're gonna send this one over to InPaint. We're gonna wipe it out because it just, the mask disappeared, okay. Now all we have to do is just mask her out, okay. The rest of the image looks fine. We're just gonna do a quick mask on her. I don't know what it's doing there. Try that again. All we wanna do is just normalize the colors a little bit. Okay. All right, so that's it. We're just gonna generate, see what it changes on her. And she disappears. <laughs> okay. So what we don't want to do is have this one turned up. I, I forgot. We're not. It's it's uh, messing with it a little too much. Local artist. Yeah. Okay. And part of the problem is the local artist is a very vague description. We're really pushing it with that one instead of being very specific. And well painted smock. And so it thinks that these covers down here on the tables are the smock. You know the the with paints you saw some of the the renders we did these look painted and it's talking about the array of fruits and vegetables so it's having a really difficult time adding in that artist so now that we have the artist in we don't want it to change too much i totally forgot about that we don't want to change the whole image up here we're going to keep it down into the uh we'll say 0.55 okay that way it's it it's keeping the image generally the same but giving enough freedom to change up some of the details and normalize the colors. As you can see, it already looks a lot more normal. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, at least that one does. Nah, she's not painted. I want something with paint all over her. That looks great, okay. All right, and so that's, I'm just gonna do those three ex individual examples. Um, and we have the street here up right up the center. We could add something in there, but I think you get the idea um, that you need to, you mask out the area where you want the person, give it enough context, uh, realize what you're masking or obviously I didn't pay much attention to the fact that this is still describing uh, fruits and vegetables at a picturesque Italian market. So because it had that in there, the AI was really trying to stick to that instead of adding the artist in. So uh, if you get rid of these, just put in something that describes a person, just the person, maybe their clothing a little bit. Leave out anything talking about the scenery, and I think you'll have a better, uh, a better, uh, you'll have better luck at getting that person in there initially. Now that the, that the person is there, we could the AI has context to work with, and you could actually change that person into anybody else you wanted. Okay. I could take any one of these people and change them into something else because there's context there. There's a person there. That's what the AI looks for. Person, female, dress. But it starts off person. So you could write in, uh, mask her out and put in young debonair man or whatever. And, and it would change that right there. You give it enough uh, freedom with the config noise or the, the denoise strength and it would change it into a man. Okay. Getting something there that doesn't exist, that's the, that's the little more difficult part. And I hope that this tutorial shows you how you can do it. Um, you could take a little bit of time beforehand to take like the image before you put anybody in here into like mini paint. This is a, an extension you can get. And you take the image into here and just draw in like a stick figure. And then you take that back out and go to image to image uh, in painting and do the same thing. Mask out that stick figure and the AI has enough context to work with. Okay, uh, it's really interesting the way the AI works that way, uh, but very useful as you can see, we got some uh, decent results. From here, just take it in and do a latent up scale with a detailer so it goes in and, and fixes faces and uh, makes everything look really nice. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I look forward to doing more videos. Uh, keep the suggestions coming. I, this was a suggestion from somebody else. They wanted to know how to add people into a scene. And um, I hope this was helpful for them. Uh, so uh, again, appreciate it. Subscribe, uh, like the video, and uh, if you haven't joined our Discord, go ahead and make the request. Uh, we got we got a ton of people on there now, uh, and uh, we're we're really having fun exploring the uh, use of our prompt generator, the prompt generator I made. So um, if you have questions about it, you know I'm I'm available. You can ask me about it too. So it's it's a great thing to have. It helps with the workflow. Okay, talk to you later.